someone punches me, I'm like, I don't feel it. I just feel more like I want to get them back. Sometimes you just can't help yourself, can you? I have to fight because otherwise they're going to think they can take me for a pussy. I didn't intend to kill anybody. Oh, my God. Wow. What I love about going out is having fun, letting your hair down, having no worries. I just like to go out and lose myself. Well, I'm supposed to be having a drink. I'm supposed to be dancing. After a few drinks, I would say I'm quite loud, rowdy. I don't care who's around. I just think it's all about me. I feel like with the alcohol as well, that adrenaline is already flowing. I sometimes start taking my clothes off when I'm drunk. When they see me walk into a bar, the staff probably think, oh, for God's sake, here she comes. My sort of banter has gotten me into uh, trouble once or twice. If I see that one of my friends is getting started on or getting pushed into, I will not have it. I'll just literally just go from zero to 100, shout in people's faces, throw drinks, start fighting, punching. Yeah, you have to keep an eye out for your friends, don't you? I'm kind of like the Grim Reaper because I'm sort of just waiting for somebody to cross. Yeah, I've had my extensions pulled out. I've had a girl bang my head off the table. Sometimes you just can't help yourself, can you? Sometimes all it takes is for one little thing for somebody to flip the lid and then Next minute, you've got a broken nose, haven't you? It wasn't even a thought process. It was literally like I just grabbed her, started punching her. If I think back, I can't think of any night I've been out and not got into some sort of drama or fight. For me to get involved was just, it was just the instinct. I think sometimes people feel like they're going to be a pussy if they don't fight. I've got myself into this argument. I have to then fight because otherwise they're going to think that I'm, I'm a pussy and they can take me for a pussy. It's become so often that it's normal to me now. If someone punches me, I'm like, I don't feel it. I just feel more like I want to get them back. How's it going? How you doing? OK. Yeah, good, thanks. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, mate. Nice to meet you. I'm just here really just to share my story, okay. um, tell you a little bit about my experiences of um, going out, okay. getting into fights and kind of where it all led me. So I used to get in fights all the time, bump into other groups of lads from other areas, always be scrapping. And then there was this one night, uh, July 2011, and it got to about 12, one o'clock at night and I lost all my friends. I got a phone call off my mates saying, no, it's all kicking off here, it's all kicking off. Me being the fucking type of person I was back then, I was like, all right, then I'm going to get straight down here yeah, and I'm yeah. going to get stuck in. So I just decided to just run in, punch the guy. Without, is that without knowing what was going on? Without knowing what was going on, yeah. yeah. Just ran straight okay. in, punched him, and then he <clears> fell on the floor and I was like, oh, shit, just ran off. It was a month later. The police started uh, raiding everyone. And my mates rang me and said, oh, we think it's something to do with that night that, that you punched that guy. And I was like, oh, don't be ridiculous. This is like a month on. Okay. Went and handed myself in at the police station. And um, police officers put me into the interview room, arrested me and said, um, we're arresting you on suspicion of murder. Killed him? No. That lad had died? That lad died from the punch. From the punch? From the one punch. He hit his head on the floor. And um, wow. they realized that he had swelling on the brain, he'd fractured his skull. Mm. Nine days later, um, he passed away. Oh, shit. Went through the court system, ended up getting dropped to manslaughter. Because yeah. what had ended up happening, it was just one single punch. And I ended up getting um, like 30 months in prison. The sad thing about it is, is that was the first time that I realised that I had some sort of expectations for my own life. For your own life, yeah. Because yeah. up until that point, I didn't really care about anyone or anything. Yeah. Oh. So that's, um, that's James. He was a trainee paramedic, wow. so he was like planning on trying to save people's lives going forward. Yeah. Does that haunt you in a way? Yeah, it does. I'm yeah. on a, I'm trying to. The biggest battle I have now is forgiving myself. So I've come out of prison worse than I went in because, for obvious reasons, I'm in there yeah, getting angry on, at my mates. On I'm your getting, own. I'm as on well. my own. I've got my mum ringing me crying, saying, you know, have you ever thought about the guy's mum? that you killed and stuff like that. And I'm like, Jeez, that I don't happen. even want to think about that. But obviously as a mum, she's thinking. For me at the time, I wasn't ready to look at it because I was scared of feeling bad. Of course, do you know yeah, what I mean? And I, I, I kind of was comfortable feeling like I was the victim because my mate snitched on me. So I went to go see my probation officer. She said, oh, have you ever heard of restorative justice? And I was like, no, what's restorative justice? And she said, well, basically, the mum and the dad of the man that you punched want to speak to you. And I was like, wow. the least I can do is try and answer some of their questions 
and mm -hmm. then move on with my life. And they told me what it was like for them to sit by their son's life support machine for nine days Jeez, and have to make hard. up, have, have to make the decision to turn, turn, uh, turn, turn it off. off. I don't want to speak on their behalf, but you know, j justice would be me learning from my lesson rather than me going in and out of prison for the rest of my life. And that's me, obviously, a yeah. bit later on. And um, that's Joan and David, the, the James's mum and dad. Wow. Um, Smiling as well. Well, Maggie. the people that have judged me the least are the ones who have been affected, affected the most. Affected the most, which well, just, just doesn't make sense. I know does it, it does. I know, but I tell you what, that is one of the beautiful things about the world is that yeah. there still is some really good people out there. I think we're very brave to come and to tell people about it, and, and you want people to change their ways, possibly from hearing your story. What you were saying as well is that we're all out here getting <laughs> wavy or drunk, or whatever yeah, you want to call yeah. it, <laughs> letting out all the stress. But sometimes we need to think about. Even how to more, address our problems, like how to in, address our in, problems in a life. more healthy way. Yeah. yeah. Rather yeah. than just being like, all right, let's smash each other up. And next time you're out and someone's starting something, ask why the argument started. Best thing that I ever did was just start talking about my problems because then the problems become real. Definitely makes me more cautious about going out and more con more considerate yeah. a little bit more than the already am. After this, I'm definitely like going to rethink everything that I'm doing. Do I need to start this argument? Or do I need to get in their face? Or do I need to? Yeah. Like, I will be rethinking like little scenarios. So thank you so much. Yeah. It's nice it's, to meet it's you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Yeah. And thanks for being so open and real with me as well. Yeah, always. <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.